Hello everybody, it's been a long time since I've purchased um, anything major for my um, audio, audio equipment for my studio or sound business. And today I just wanted to, I wanted to do an unboxing of um, one of my favorite things and sort of discuss one of my favorite sorts of audio gear and sort of discuss as much about it as I possibly can. Um, cause there doesn't seem to be a lot of content in this regard and this and that. And, um, I'm thinking about for some of my future upcoming videos, I'm going to be doing, um, mostly just nerding out over rare vintage antique audio equipment, stuff that you might find at thrift stores, uh, mom and pop guitar shops, um, things of that sort that, um, not a lot of, um, there's not readily a lot of information about them and also how that they can be utilized and even integrated for, uh, you know, specific setups or even with, um, even with contemporary, um, recording setup. So anyway, I'm tickled to death because I, it's been, it's been probably years since I've, uh, well, in, invested in the capital for my business. Um, I'm going to actually probably, yeah, make a mess. We'll see if this came all in one piece or not. And, um. I'm really excited about it because um, I already own one of these and it is my favorite speaker I ever purchased. Now, the one I originally got was at a, uh, a thrift or a rummage sale down in um, Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. And um, I bought it for $20.00. And I did a uh, did a TRS conversion and have been using it as a guitar speaker for about six years now. And I hardly ever want to use anything else. I do have like half stacks upstairs for like if I'm performing with a um, you know a live drummer in the same room or like you know for rehearsal purposes and that sort of thing. So. That we can equally deafen each other. But for most intents and purposes for like recording and practice, and especially if you're gonna to go to a venue that has their own PA system, well this is good, it's looking like they may have packed this very well. Um, I find these to be particularly ideal. And I've always, and I've wanted a second one for a while because the speaker is very versatile. It sounds really good with um, guitar. But I wanted a second one in order to use for small venues for a PA system. For like a um, miniature PA system for small venues that don't have a lot of um, where, where, where space is really critical and the volume doesn't necessarily have to be uh, blistering to the ears. There it is. I'm really excited um, to check this out and I'd really like to share these with you because sometimes, you know, like when I'm shopping for, for them or seeing them in forums, people are asking me or not asking me directly, but or asking, uh, or will these work good with a guitar? And these and that, and um, I've seen a couple videos where people convert these into combos by installing an amplifier into them. This, my friends, is the Filmo Sound 
179. How's that shot look? All right. Now, originally, these were designed to go with the Filmo 179 projector system. And they come with a proprietary connector. Um, and the existing one that I have behind me, I had installed a TRS jack into it. And while looking at it today, I noticed that the, uh, the secondary port on it looks a little compromised. It's probably why I didn't tap into that one. So I may or may not be able to just directly plug this in, this one in to go parallel. However, um, that's very clean. Now this one actually includes the retractable cord and I suppose we're going to be testing that here momentarily. Um, mine did not still, my old one did not have the retractable cord. I also noticed there's a slight speaker difference and it might just be because of the year that they were made or it's possible that maybe uh, a speaker was interchanged from a B1 to a B2 but uh, specs wise they're identical. I don't think it should be audibly any different. One of the reasons I find these to be my, these are my favorite speaker cabinet design of like all time. I do see a little bit of damage here at the bottom. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, it sat somewhere moist here for a little while, but that's not too, too bad. Um, these are about 80 years old. And uh, principally, uh, the, um, the early electric guitar amplifiers and speakers were uh, built around the, uh, were, were built around the um, same technology that was used for the old um, talking uh, films. Um, when, when, uh, when, when they finally had audio to go along with it for the movie projectors. So it's not like they reinvented the wheel. They basically um, took the same sort of amp and design, um, put, a, uh, put a preamp into the system. And um, so a lot of those, uh, a lot of the technology that, that went into, you know, electric guitar amps and um, speaker speaker cabs um, originate from uh, projector systems. What's nice about these uh, projector speakers in particular is they're kind of overbuilt. They got a nice shielding around the uh, voice coil um, which helps keep dirt out which is one of the reasons they tend to work really well even after um, nearly a century. Um, the other reason I think that they sound uh, fantastic, not just because of the high quality um, speakers that, th that they put in here, but in this particular uh, model cab, well, I think the B1 has these too. Um, there is like a felt or a wool-like layering on the interior, which helps um, prevent like uh, um, the cabinet from resonating or coloring um, and like boosting bass frequencies um, more than the um, and, and, and drowning out some of the other frequencies so I find that um, I've never used these say as a recording monitor um, but I would say for a guitar speaker to guitar cab in, in that utility uh, they they seem very transparent, they, they, and then that's one of the reasons I really, I, I've really just just fell in love with, with the, the one I had previously. Is is it real? They really allow the amp and, and the tone of the amp to really shine through. Um, I probably 
try to get you a little bit better view of the interior. Try not to jerk you all around too much. But one of the reasons that I think these cabs are just absolutely phenomenal is um, this felt or wool synthetic. I really couldn't tell you what the material is, but this is one of the things I like best about it. The other thing that I'm particularly um, fond of is the way these doors open and latch because uh, you know of course you can go closed back and then of course you have storage for say film media or this or that I have a pedal I have a particularly fancy pedal that I like to put in the back of my other one and I keep it I keep it securely back here and I, um, but the other thing is is that you know, some people like, say, for, like, recording and this and that. Uh, you know, some people have a preference for a closed back sound or an open back sound. And this doesn't just simply come off, but you can have closed back or open back, basically, to whatever degree you like. They're also built very rugged. So... I'm going to have a look around the front. Now, I don't actually have a Filmosound 179 projector. Of course, I don't intend to use it that way. Um, and in fact, the very next thing I'm going to do here momentarily is... Um, I'm going to uh, find my electrical testers and check the impedance and make sure that the, uh, sp the speaker has proper values. I was so pleased when I bought the old one and it being uh, 16 ohms on the nose. Um, this is my great grandfather's Ampro speaker that I recently obtained from well, my grandfather's house. I live in my great grandfather's house. Um, and I do have the projector to this here. With this one in particular, what I've done is I installed a solid state amplifier into the back side of it. Um, which I stripped from a crate and the primary reason was because um, I found that when I would plug this into another amp I mean another speaker it sounded wonderful but the speak the speaker and cab that this was originally in um, just sounded terrible but I liked the way this amp sounded on its own so I installed it into the top of this one which leaves me a spare jack and I mean, you could just see the construction of the speaker is absolutely solid and phenomenal. Like, it just feels so good. Put Jack in there. Um, and so, anyway, I still have the projector to, the, to this, which I think has a salvageable amplifier. The, um, the real arms on the projector um, are broken and um, um, I haven't I've never even I've never even tested it but I think the, the amplifier and it looks sound so I'll probably be doing a, um, a guitar amplifier conversion to the uh, projector that was originally paired with um, this one here And you can see, I installed a uh, TRS to, to activate that one. And naturally, the, the one that just came in, naturally the, the one that just came in 
does not have that modification yet. However, what I will do is I will fire up the uh, little orange amplifier that I use. I, I primarily use to drive this. Um, I happen to like that uh, that p particular pairing. All right. So now all I'm going to do with the new speaker, the new to me speaker is I'm going to just test the functionality real quick because I did just purchase it. We'll see if the retractable portion works. It does. Um, it may or may not be necessary. I haven't made up my mind whether I might use might not even use that because I went through the I have the other one tapped in through the uh, female end and of course now now huh. let's have a look at that so if there's a button or not. To get that to go back in. I wonder how much cord it gives me. to work it just needed a little bit of uh, encouragement whether that part stays or not I haven't made my mind up on the other hand what's more important is the uh, speaker itself going to do go ahead and test its health here after which I'll install TRS so we can use it with uh, more conventional amplifiers Probably do just the same as going through the uh, f the female port. All right. First and foremost, let's make sure we got continuity. Okay, that's a good sign. Now, let's go to ohms. Cross your fingers for 16 ohms on the nose. Ooh. That does not appear to be what we're getting, though. 12, 13, well, we might have a short in there somewhere. Let's try disconnecting um, this port here. It'll let me.
still about 12, 13. Although it is working. Oh, wait, we got 16 that time. Oh. All right, so anyway, I'm going to let my soldering iron heat up, and I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I don't suppose it would be worthwhile for me to explicitly um, show you how to solder. Plus, there's other YouTubers, and there's, there's, there's other people who can teach you to solder better than I can anyhow. But what I'm going to do is my other speaker in the other cabinet, which I said, like I said, is slightly different style doesn't have these particular uh, um, exposed contact points anywhere so which meant that I had to fabricate a um, connector because I didn't have anything of the sort I don't want to disrupt this too much because um, as a matter of fact after I put some thought into it um, the um, I can actually use this cord. If I pull the, the uh, jack I fabricated from the other speaker and connect it to uh, the TRS to this one, I can uh, test them running parallel. Um, which direction the phase is uh, for this, I don't know. It's going to have to, um, we're going to, I'm going to have to. Uh, Uh, try and um, try it with uh, what I'll do is try it parallel with that one I will also run it uh, parallel with the solid state um, Ampro and try a few configurations if it sounds good we'll leave it alone and if it doesn't I'll just uh, Resolder the uh, jack points in the opposite direction. All right, like I said, just about anybody can teach you how to solder better than I can. But all right, the uh, first test is going to be with solely with the orange speaker, which I should have pre-warmed. I suppose. Well, I'm just turning it on for the first time. We'll see what happens, and um, yeah. Don't be confused. I switched the speakers out for real. You can see the retractable cable in that one, probably. Supposing it's been a little while since the voice coil had any exercise. So, I'm going to test this like this real quick. Whether this part makes it in the video or not, I don't know at this point. I'm just doing Let's do uh, 
taste two of the tests and we'll hook it up to the other speaker <laughs> phase two I'll be right back all right I'm now presently plugged into both speakers and presumably in parallel I believe it would be parallel that the uh, orange is rated for. plugged into the Ampro and the Bell and Howe on the left um, using the solid state amp that I installed in the Ampro. Uh, admittedly, I did try all three together. It didn't sound that good. I don't think it hurt the amp none, but it, uh, it yeah, it's kind of like, it just sounded flat and yucky. But, uh, so this is my clean tone. And maybe in one of these videos, I'll do a project. Uh, I've been meaning to put a uh, TR, another TRS in this to put uh, to, so I can actually connect a uh, foot pedal. Uh, because the one thing I particularly like about the amp in this one is it sort of got like a built-in fuzz distortion and I just like the way it sounds. <laughs> Alright, 
on a speaker that um, I've had for quite a bit longer. Um, I found a way to adapt the uh, cord I fabricated to the uh, male port um, very securely. Leaving the female port wide open to use with the uh, retractable connector. So, got the best of both worlds in that circumstance. They each have, now have TRS connectability. I can interlink them with the proprietary cord. And I'm, uh, I'm very pleased with that. Um, I was going to finish this with testing it with a um, powered PA board. Um, to, to use the separate channels. But um, I totally nixed that idea because I forgot... Um, how, how much power that particular board has and I really don't even want to take a chance at um, <laughs> blowing these up so I will not be using that board um, with these in fact I forgot that's an 1100 watt amp and um, you know they get a push overdrive you know my big peavies even so i think uh i think i'm going to pass on that for now i'm going to use this uh i'm going to keep, keep using the orange amp primarily and i think i'm probably going to link these two for the time being um because i really like the way that sounds a guitar ampeg i mean i'm just keep saying ampeg the ampro um i typically use with vocals with the tube preamp um uh with a remote with a secondary remote tube preamp so that way I can um, uh, add as much grit or uh, take it away as, as I like so I primarily use that for now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna link these in the fashion I had it previously and if you like watching me fart around with um, electronics and this or that, you know what to do. Like and subscribe, and uh, I, I've got uh, I got I got a lot more videos of uh, similar nature coming out very soon. Look forward to talking about this and this. Hey guys, this is Mike Gerard from Pandemic Entertainment, former member of the Chrono Masters band. Hope you guys like what you're seeing. Uh, guys, I need you to subscribe. Like and subscribe to Wizard Clip Audio on Facebook and YouTube. We have a lot of really great stuff headed your way. Awesome, perfect. It's nice to hear from you again, Mike.